Good morning. Good morning. Are we on? There's some dogs out there in the dog run. Look at that. We have a little dog park out there, and they said hello to me this morning. I like dogs. Uh. Uh, there's a dog here in town that looks just like Tank. I, I walk by this house all the time, and there's this dog. You remember Tank, the pit bull? Okay. I, I did the RV Joey thing this morning. RV Joey had this one great quote. She said that, uh, oh, here. Texas, Texas, never quit. Going to Lollapalooza in October, one way or the other. I will be there. Um, breakfast. Papa, I don't know. Hey, how you doing, Papa Texas? How's it going? Um, okay, so RV Joey said, RV Joey said, what's the song I'm writing? RV Joey said, she said, she said, she said, she writes down notes of things to remember and then she forgets where she put the notes. That's exactly what I did. I wrote that, made a bunch of notes today because I want to talk to you about some things. And then I uh, was getting halfway to the car here and I forgot where I put the notes. Where are my notes? I had to go back and look for them. Oh, man. Holy cow. Uh, good morning, little Adam. How are you? Go fool me. Go fool me is our topic today. Um, a lot of nomads, not only nomads, but a lot of YouTubers. Hey, Rob. A lot of nomads uh, like to um, do these uh, GoFundMes, you know? Uh, you know, hey, the, every opportunity they can find for to raise a little bit of money, they do it. And we see this all the time, you know, your truck gets stolen, uh, some, your, ve your vehicle needs repairs or something breaks down on it, etc., etc. And we see that all the time. We just see that constantly. And, you know, GoFundMe's this. People get sick sometimes and they don't have medical insurance. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I think people just say, think, you know, hey, I'm not even going to waste my time paying for that medical insurance because I'll just do a GoFundMe if I ever need to. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of questions. You know, I, I think when I see one of these GoFundMes, it actually raises more questions for me than it answers. You know, someone says, hey, I, I you know, have whatever. The, the, Something happened to me, to my truck, to my vehicle, repairs, whatever, uh, and I need X amount of dollars, and you know, and then people just, you know, boo ba da boo ba da boo, throw the money there. Um, I always have questions, like, well, well, what about this? What about insurance? What about, don't you already make money on YouTube? Don't you have other sources of income? Don't you? I always have other questions. Why, why is it costing so much for this? Uh, you know, you know, people that get sick, okay? You get sick and you go to the hospital. Sometimes the person's not even been in the hospital for a day and there's already a GoFundMe to pay the hospital bill. How do you even know what it's gonna cost? Oh, it's gonna cost a lot. You know, I mean, you know, I, do you have insurance and why isn't your insurance covering it? And, uh, you know, maybe you can qualify for some programs for, for people that have no insurance. Sometimes they have local and state programs that'll help pay the bill and hospitals will sometimes make a deal with you if you can't afford it. I mean, you know, there's all these questions about stuff and, and it's like people just immediately, like somebody's in the hospital, I must start a GoFundMe immediately. You know, wait till the bill comes. They don't often bill you for a couple of months. You, know, you go to the hospital. And why you just the first thing you think about is, you know, I gotta, how am I gonna afford this? Why not just not worry about how you're gonna afford it and just make sure the person is in the hospital gets the care? I mean, it's stuff like that, you know? Money, money, money. You know, I don't know. There are nomads. There are nomads that live literally that have no money. They have no nothing saved up. They don't make a lot of money on YouTube. They literally are going out on the road with nothing in their bank accounts. With 90, one certain nomad that we cover, Elvis, uh, said the other day he has $90 in his bank account. <laughs> it's like, all right. I hear it. Why is this guy tailgating me? I don't know. You know, this. I'm on a double road, uh, four lane road here. He can pass me. I'll just go as slow as I want to go. I don't know. Go, goodbye. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah. Uh, 
The other th okay, so the GoFundMe's. Here's a deal. Say you have a repair. Like, say you are a regular nomad and you do have some savings, okay? And you need a repair done. Why not wait? And you do have the money for the repair, perhaps, you know? And at least wait until you know how much it's going to cost before you do your GoFundMe, you know? If you're in the hospital and you don't have insurance and things work out a certain way, now you got a bill. Okay, now they're going to make you pay that bill, right? You got to pay that bill now. No, you just say, okay, give me the bill, I'll pay it. Now you at least know how much it's going to cost, you know? Your catalytic converter gets stolen, but barely hours, in the hour after it's stolen, you're already up on YouTube kind of wondering, how am I going to pay for this? I mean, you know, most YouTubers, they have some money saved up. They got the money there for the emergency repair. You should have an emergency fund. You really should. Uh, and at least wait and see how much the uh, repair is going to be, you know, before you start, you know, asking people for money. You know, the other thing is this, and I see this with GoFundMes now and then. And, you know, again, I'm not making any insinuations about any particular nomads and GoFundMes and stuff. I'm, you know, I'm not mentioning any names as you notice this. I'm just talking in generality. So don't think I'm talking about any particular nomads. There was a particular nomad that had a catalytic converter stolen the other day. There was a particular nomad that had a truck stolen the other day. I'm not talking about those channels specifically, okay? I'm just talking about YouTubers in general that do the GoFundMe stuff. And... <clears throat> You know, I see this all the time, like somebody needs the repair and they get a GoFundMe or they do some sort of super chat fundraiser for the repair and they get actually way more than they needed, you know? And then what do you do with it, you know? I mean, there was a certain explorer there in Tennessee a while back who did a big thing about, I need money for my dog's operation. And he got quite a bit of money on his GoFundMe for it. And then the dog didn't need the op. He comes back a week later and says, hey, guess what, everybody? The vet says the dog doesn't need the operation. And I'm like, oh, are you going to return all the GoFundMe money? And then I, I get like, you know, this reply like, well, if somebody asks for the money back, I'll give it to them. But otherwise, I'm just going to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. The dog didn't, you know, what if, what if you, you know, you need to have some repair done to your vehicle and it, and it, you, know, you raise $3,000 and the repair is only $1,000. Are you going to say, hey, folks, I'm going to go fund you, go fund some gonna refund go refund me they should have a go instead of a go fund me they should have a go refund me i don't know man <laughs> it's just crazy go fund me's uh you know a lot of times people uh will have some issue with their vehicle and uh you know maybe they're in an accident and oh you're go fund me well, yeah, but you got insurance too. Now, maybe the insurance will take a while to get the money for. Sometimes you got to hassle with insurance companies, you know, but maybe you will eventually get the money. You know, if your vehicle does get stolen, often insurance companies will cover that and there may be glitches and there may be hurdles, but eventually you might get, you, you might get paid. Who knows? Depends on what kind of insurance you got. Uh, <clears throat> And you immediately do a GoFundMe. Oh, okay. The same day your vehicle's stolen, you're out there with the GoFundMe. And you get X amount of dollars, and then you get the money from the GoFundMe. And then, uh, a couple weeks later, you get the insurance check for at least part of that. You know, on top of your GoFundMe money. Now you're like, you know, way, you're way, <laughs> way ahead of... Are you, what are you going to do? Hey, folks, I got my insurance money and I don't need to go... You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's so many questions. You see these GoFundMes and it's questions, questions. Don't you have insurance? Don't you have this? Uh, you know, I, I always have that. With, with everything on GoFundMe, it's kind of like, go fool me, you know? I don't know. And then you have the people that do the super chats. They come on and they do a super chat like immediately after something happens. They don't even know how much it's going to cost. If they're still in kind of shock over it. And 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 there's and they're saying, "Please don't I I have the money, don't pay. I don't need super chat." And people are still throwing the money. To tell people during a super chat not to pay you is like is, is in a weird way it's like reverse psychology, 
know, there's one particular nomad, not a nomad, a car review guy, that when he does his super chat chats, he'll actually put up a big sign, please, no more super chats. And then he gets uh, super chats. They, they keep coming. It's, it's weird to say, please, I can cover this. Oh, I still want to send you the money. <laughs> please, no more super. I don't know. You know, and, and again, a lot of these nomads, again, it's a question of, are you really, really, really totally broke and destitute and don't have savings? Or do you have money out there, but you just don't want to use it to buy the, to pay for this stupid repair? I get it. You know, we all save up money and we want to use it for cool things and to improve our channel and new cameras and, and fancy stuff for our RVs or whatever. And nobody wants to spend money on, you know, some busted piece of crap that has to get replaced, you know? I don't know. I just... I just see too much, so many people rushing, rushing so much to start GoFundMes when they really don't even know how much something's going to cost, you know, and they really don't even know how much insurance is going to kick back. Yeah, now, it may be a while before the insurance kicks back, and yes, the GoFundMe, if you raise, you know, $10,000 today, you might get it next week. I don't know. People, and they don't answer all the questions. You know, all these questions. Well, what about your insurance? What about this? What about that? What about this? Uh, why did you... Blah, 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 blah. I don't know. We see a lot of that. We do see a lot of that. Anyway, I got to run in Wally World. I'll be right back. <sighs> hey, hey. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hello again, little Adam. How are you? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh... So we talked about uh, the GoFundMe stuff. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was a very interesting video from Mr. Uh, Chrome Van City Van Life. Now, again, a lot of people say, "Oh, you talk about him too much." The reason I find <clears throat> the reason I <clears throat> the reason I find him so fascinating is uh, because he talks a lot about building his YouTube channel and he's gone to a certain degree to really turn it into a professional operation. You know, there are so many nomads out there. You know, mom and pops and, uh, you know, broke solo female nomads and you name it. They're all different kinds of nomads. Chrome is a business guy, okay? He is. He's got a mind for business. He's got a mind for, you know, what, you know. And, and he has this very interesting Q&A today or yesterday he uploaded it about how he's building his YouTube channel and, and you know, <laughs> He, a lot of people ask him, you know, you do all this stuff. You're always at tire shops or doing van builds or, or, you know, going to places. Are you getting stuff for free? Are these people just giving you free stuff or what? You know? And he gets into a very good discussion about that. He said, yes, sometimes he does get stuff for free, but more often than not, he's paying for it. And... <clears throat> or at least paying part of it. There again, there are deals you get, you make discounts with people, you get you know certain benefits and stuff like that. Sometimes you outright get a gift where they actually pay for everything. Other times, it's just all different. And what he does, he's very much a businessman, and he says to various businesses, hey look, I'm running a YouTube channel, I, I want to film everything, you know, and document it and do the whole thing. And if they say no to him, then he says, okay, see you later, alligator, and he goes somewhere else. So he wants to, you know, work with these companies. And because he already now has such a base of, of subscribers and viewers, that he actually brings business to their, you know, businesses. And he said there was a particular uh, van guy, a, a guy was building cabinets for him that just was kind of a home handyman and said, hey, I'll build you some cabinets. And everybody liked the cabinets so much that now the guy has all these requests to build cabinets and has actually started his own business of building cabinets, which is really fascinating. Ah. So Chrome has been basically saying it's, it's like, you know, he's gone way above what a typical nomad in a van would do. And he's actually built this professional business, which is in the business of promoting other businesses. That's a big thing about what he's doing. And, you know, and I say to myself, now, why do I want to watch this guy? You know, I like watching nomads, particularly solo nomads out living on the road and, and how they deal with things. And I do watch a lot of those channels and how they survive and get along with all their, you know, various foibles and stuff. 
like Chrome's a whole different animal. You know, Van City Van Life, it's, he's, he's been able to take his channel and really turn it into something big in terms of business, cranking out, you know, referrals for other businesses and all this other stuff. And it's way above a lot of other people. You know, you do see certain nomads that have actually done very well. In, in their five years on the road and uh, definitely have built businesses where they make enough money or business you know, content channels where they make enough money to support themselves. But Chrome, I think, I think has gone way beyond that. I really do. <laughs> I really do. You know, he's, he's taken it up to another level and to me that's fascinating and oddly compelling and that's one of the reasons why I watch him. You know, now, do I think his channel is as good as it was when he first started out and was really struggling to live on the road? In some ways, no, I don't. I don't think, you know, it's, it's just not as interesting, you know? Just, to, you know, but it is fascinating just to see how much he is able to be, you know, super businessman on the road and all that other stuff. You know, it's just been very interesting to see that. And, uh, you know, you, you know, th this question and answer thing he did yesterday was quite good. You know, he gives you a lot of background details about what's going on and in his business and all that other stuff. What else did I want to talk about here? Uh, anyway. Oh, he has an assistant now. We've known that. The other interesting thing he talks about are his comments. Uh, you know, he just says, he, you know, good, good Lord, you know, he gets like 30,000 comments a day or something, you know. He's, not only does his current video get comments, but he's getting comments on all of his old stuff that's been up there for years. People are, one of the things too, you have what they call an evergreen channel. You, you put up material that people will be watching in two or three or four years. Can, you know, if you're doing Disney or certain Explorer things, those people are still going to come to your channel and watch those old videos. Uh, some people are starting with Chrome from the beginning and they enjoy those early days and they're watching watching him in order like that. You know, so he is getting people watching those and he said he just gets bombarded with so many comments every day that he just doesn't have the time in the day to answer everything. And I get that. I mean, even my little channel here, you know, I'm getting texts every day, voicemails every day, I get emails every day, I get you know, I have three email accounts and I just can't keep up with it some days, you know. And people will send you these heartfelt emails about their lives and what they're doing and how much they love me. <laughs> and I just, and I feel bad that I'm not getting to everything every day, but I just can't, you know. I just literally can't. Anyway, very good, a very good thing there from Chrome. I thought that was a good video. Fran Blanche is this lady in uh, Philadelphia who uh, does a channel with sciencey stuff, okay? She has a little lab there and she's very funny and I really enjoy her channel. And she had a video the other day that went viral. She was talking about 60 Minutes did a story on UFOs. Uh, I guess it was a couple of weekends ago and she parlayed that into a UFO talking about UFOs and stuff like that and her video went viral a couple million views and she was talking about how that impacted her channel and how when you get a viral video your sub count jumps up uh, and then all of a sudden all your other video counts with view counts go up people are a lot of people are fine are just discovering your channel from that video oh i've never heard of fran fran lab her name she has fran labs and she has a lab and she's very scientific and she does a lot of quirky stuff and it's a good channel and i do enjoy watching her but she was talking about the what happens when you get a viral video and uh, you know, it pulls everything up at least temporarily, and then things start to settle down. And uh, and it's interesting how the YouTube algorithm works because you know you can put a video up about UFOs and nobody will watch it, and then somebody puts a video up about UFOs and the algorithm picks it up, and all of a sudden everybody's watching it. You know, I've, I have tried that. You know, there was a time a couple months ago and Maddie Van Halen talked about getting kicked off of uh, a Kroger parking lot there in Nashville, uh, you know, because they didn't allow overnight camping or overnight parking anymore. And he got like, you know, 600,000 views of that at the last count. And I do videos on that kind of crap all the time and I'm barely lucky to get a thousand views, you know. So I actually, I actually copied his exact title of his video and I think I got 800 views of it. I don't know. It's whatever the, the YouTube algorithm, it's, it does, you, no one understands it. 
It's a total guess as to what it is. People, and then you see other people. I saw Carolyn's RV Life the other day doing a, a UFO titled video, thinking she was going to be able to probably get a viral video out of it. And you know, she didn't catch the uh, algorithm wave like most of us. It's very hard to do that. It's very hard to set out to make a viral video. You know, it just happens. You know, it just really happens. But Fran's. Uh, Fran's uh, little talk there was very good about what's, what, how her channel uh, is affected by a viral video. So I thought that was good. All right, folks. So that's my topics for today. I'm going to, again, I always make these rants way too long, so I'm going to cut it short. <laughs> I try, I'm hopefully keeping it under 15 minutes, but I bet you, I bet you it's longer than 15. Why did somebody took my parking place? I got my favorite little parking place over here and I'm gone for 40 minutes and it's taken. Damn it! Damn it! I don't like that. That's uh, that makes me angry. Ugh. Come on, I need a reserve spot. I need a reserve spot. Oh, okay, I can park over here. This isn't bad. <laughs> the, the other, the only problem with this spot is it's you know bird crap drops on your car, but little Adam don't mind that. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. You have a wonderful rest of your Friday. I'll chat with you later. And don't forget, Texas, it never quits.